It's a statuette of an airman. Uh, quite typical. He's being depicted as quite typical of what an airman looks like when he was getting ready to go off on a mission. The airman has on inverted sheepskin jacket, inverted sheepskin trousers, inverted sheepskin boots, and helmet is lined with sheepskin. He had an oxygen mask. It's depicted here with the mask off and the hose dangling down in front of his chest. This oxygen mask covered the chin, the mouth, and the nose, not the eyes. About the oxygen mask, before you flew, you shaved because you wanted that oxygen mask to fit tight. You didn't want the air leaks and so forth. But my personal oxygen mask, because I have an irregularity in my nose, they took a half hour in fitting it. That's how important they considered a good fit of an oxygen mask. The airman has on a parachute, which is behind him. It has on a yellow May West. The May West was a device that uh, was a device that when you bailed out and landed in water, you could inflate it, and hopefully it would keep you afloat. Apparently, it did. Jim Mill <laughs> and his crew. The oxygen mask was connected to the oxygen supply in the aircraft. At high altitude, <coughs> the air and the oxygen is very, very low. There isn't a great deal of oxygen. At 10,000 feet, we'd lost half of our oxygen. At 20,000 feet, we'd lost almost three-fourths in the air. So we had to have this outside supply. Now, I've described the outside of the, the outer clothing there, and I'll describe the inner clothing, and I can only talk from my own experience. I got up in the morning, on the day I have an admission, we were awake, awakened about 3 o'clock, shaved, went and had breakfast, went to briefing, and then we went into the dressing room. Before I left the barracks, I put on a heavy pair of long underwear, woolen. It wasn't an army issue, it was one that my mother had sent me, <laughs> and I was ever thankful because it was heavier than what the army gave me. <laughs> then I put on my uniform khaki or olive drab shirt, wool, and my uniform woolen trousers. Then I put on long silk white gloves. Over that, woolen gloves. Then I put on a heated suit. Heated suit worked like a heated blanket, electric heated blanket. The heated suit consisted of a jacket, heated gloves, Heated boots and heated trousers, and they interconnected with snap connections. The, uh, glove from the wrist, and the trouser, and the boots. Then I put on the May West, and I put on the parachute harness, then I put on the outer clothing. And I had one extra item that many airmen didn't have. And I, to this day, I don't know how I acquired it, but thanks to a lady in Connecticut, who I wrote a thankful letter to, I had a knitted olive drab scarf, eight feet long, one foot wide. They were necessary for tail Yes. That airplane had two openings on each side of the rear doors, and there was like a 160 mile an hour gale went through those slots. Now, why did I put on so much clothing? For one, <laughs> you're in an airplane that had none of the conveniences of a modern airplane. It was drafty. We
windy. If you're, a, if you're a waist gunner or a tail gunner, you were standing in a gale. And often, at bombing altitude, it was 50 below or even lower. My pilot told me that the external air temperature gauge, its highest marking was minus 50 degrees. And often the needle on that meter was pinned against that 50, minus 50 degrees. <laughs> How about the microphone? Yes. Some of the older, earlier versions of the microphone was a throat mic, which you had to sort of fit tightly with a strap and sometimes to talk intelligently, hold it against your throat. The later ones were incorporated into the oxygen mask. And the heads, the uh, Showman had a set of headphones in it. These were connected to an intercom system. This provided the ability to talk to your fellow crew members while you were flying. Back to the scarf. I would put the scarf on after I had put my oxygen mask on. Start up here, go around, go around, come down all the way to my chest and then take the two ends and stuck it inside my outer jacket. Ow. Then make holes in the scarf to make sure that I didn't block the exits or the exhaust for the oxygen mask. You had to be worried about the oxygen mask exhaust getting full of ice from the moisture in your breath. But this is my personal experience. This is how I lived and worked with the cold. It was a very common experience for all the people who flew.